72 hours, goddamn, I'm feeling late. Damn, I'm in the face my mind. Let's live in that cloud now, and this night is never on vacation. Sound of that mind's a rally. Yo, what's going on guys? This is Horcrux here. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you guys for tuning in. So, I'm going to be bringing you my MAGDK PvP build for the Flames of Ambition patch for the Proctard areas such as IC and Battlegrounds. I ran this build in the past. I have tailored it to suit this patch. This is my Tempest build. I'll leave a card somewhere up here with my original build. So, without further ado, fellas, let's get right into it. So character sheet, I'm going to kind of slowly go through this, we're not in any rush. Here's everything completely unbuffed. And then if we fully buff, here's kind of what we're looking at, around 4200 spell damage. Uh, this can be higher if you want to change your trait, which I wouldn't suggest doing so. If you want to take a look at your recoveries, running try stats, here's what you're looking at as, as well. Don't really pay attention too much to the recoveries, we're running a lot of reduced costs on this build and you really don't have to worry about sustain all too much. Uh, the only issues with this build is when you're, you're out of combat regeneration is really low but your in combat regeneration is, is pretty high based on one of the sets that we're running so uh, just kind of keep that in mind. So Dunmer, first of all I just like the Dunmer class. You can be Breton or High Elf, it really doesn't matter I mean, max wise. Typically run the Bewitched Sugar Skulls as my consumable. Currently running the Apprentice Mundus. Um, if you are struggling with sustain, however, feel free to swap this to the Atro. Um, I felt very over sustainy with Atro, so I just dropped it for the Apprentice. It just gave me a little bit more damage and also increases your healing. Sets wise, so the first set we're running is Elfbane. I know you guys will give me a lot of shit. You think Elfbane is a bad set, but it is not if you run it a certain way. Running charge on this. The reason we're running charge is twofold, actually. Um, the first reason is for our combustion passive. If you guys are unfamiliar or new to the DK class, if I can find it here, good lord, the combustion passive states that anytime you apply a burning stats effect, you restore magicka and then vice versa for uh, poison you, your source stamina. There's no cap on this, there's no internal cooldown. Anytime a burning effect is applied, you get magic back for that, and that's our primary primary source of sustain. Can't speak today. And I'll explain a little bit about that in just a moment. So running shock, the reason running shock is because you're 100% guaranteed to apply the concussed status effect. And the concussed status effect increases your overall damage against that target by 8%. And that pairs really, really well with our other set, which I'll go ahead and mention, which is overwhelming. So overwhelming when it procs, which is pretty much 100% of the time, is, is super high uptime. Um, it emits this huge electrical discharge around you. So when you hit people with it, you see charge, excuse me, concuss, whatever on this dude applied immediately and the reason for that is we procced overwhelming on our back bar and every one to two ticks of this when it hits because with our charge enchant or excuse me charge straight on the front bar you're really really likely to apply the concussed stats effect so not only do you apply it on the person you're targeting but everyone who gets hit by this aoe essentially has the debuff on them and the aoe is really large i mean you can see here it's hitting this blob uh, pretty distantly far away so this pretty much increases your overall damage by 8% by whoever is on you such a great set plus the more damage it does more people around you the more sustain you get back from it and also it does a little bit more damage um, is a very very good set I do back bar this only and I elf bane front bar only I'll explain that a little more in depth in just a moment Another set we're running is Grothgar, if you guys can probably imagine. They did nerf this several times in the past, but the AoE and just overall damage, sustained damage that this applies is just really, really good. It pulls people out of stealth. It's just a really good set. Uh, you could run Scoria, but Scoria does proc kind of sporadically. You could run Bloodspawn if you really wanted to, um, but kind of defeats the purpose of running Elfbane. Um, traits wise, uh, we are running 5 heavy, 1 medium, 1 light. So we get a lot of extra sustain from heavy attacks. I do medium attack weave on this build instead of light attack weaving. It just seems better with all the, the lag and going on. I mean, IC really doesn't have too much, but in BG sometimes you do experience it. 
Uh, traits wise, uh, I do have a couple reinforced pieces, um, as you'll see. Reinforced, sturdy, and pin, it's all good. Um, if you're in BGs, however, I would probably do less in pin and go more into the sturdy reinforce. But uh, if you're an IC, in pin's uh, pretty important because there's a lot of Nightblade Bursty boys out there. So, are running a one piece trainee as well to help bolster our health, give us more survivability. And then the last set we're running is Malachi's Band of Brutality, of course. This buffs the overall damage of all of our proc sets by 25%. We cannot crit, but who gives a damn? We can crit heal on our back bar. We don't really need crit damage whatsoever since our crit percentage is only at like a 11.7%. Who cares? You know? So I'm running one recovery on my Maliband and then two cost reductions. I found that this is probably the best way to run it. Uh, if you don't have enough recovery, you do have a lot of out of combat recovery issues, which makes getting into the next fight uh, a little more time consuming. But uh, if you don't really mind for that little bit of downtime to recuperate, then it really doesn't matter. Notice I am running an ice staff. I really like the ice staff defending on the back bar because you can proc your weapon damage enchantment pretty consistently. And you can apply pressure on your back bar, you know, from any range. I, I can't tell you how annoying it is when I'm on my back bar and I'm using my spells. I'm trying to lie attack weave and sorks peppering me with frags and curses from afar. Uh, this lie attack damage does kind of add up. So that's why I like running the ice staff. Just a personal preference. Really. You can run sword and board all the same, but uh, ice staff is typically my go-to. So let's go over the skills. Now front bar, uh, running engulfing flames, uh, this fully buffed up, uh, actually it's already <laughs> at 10% value, so you do 10% uh, uh, more damage to everyone you have inflicted by this. Fossilize just for the CC, it's the best CC like ever. Uh, you can use the other uh, morph that actually heals you, but you have enough healing on this build to get away with it. But if you do feel like you need more healing, run uh, Shattering Rock I believe it is, the other morph of Fossilize. Burning Talons, now I would almost run Elf Bane just because of Burning Talons alone. Um, this is a hellacious dot, and Elf Bane more than doubles the duration of a Burning Talon. So it's doing 16,000 damage. Nothing's buffed up like whatsoever. We don't have any buffs going. If we did fully buff up, right? Um, this is damn near, it's 19, almost a 20k dot over 9 seconds. It's a huge ass AoE, it applies root, it applies a synergy if you're running with a group of two or more that they can also activate. With Elpane, this is just such a strong ass skill. Um, especially if you're on controller, it helps root people so you can actually aim your spells. I can't tell you how many times I miss engulfing flames because I just can't hit the roly poly olies. Flame Lash, uh, running this uh, just to get our Power Lash off now. Uh, you don't necessarily have to fossilize and Flame Lash to get your Power Lash. You can burn Talons and Flame Lash, and I'll also proc Power Lash. And then, of course, if they dodge roll that, you're just going to fossilize and I'll proc Power Lash that way. So you have two ways of applying Power Lash here. Uh, burning Embers, uh, this just helps to keep you capped off. It applies the burning effect 100% uh, of the time when you use it. And it's a really heavy hitting dot as well. Using Ferocious Leap as our gap closer. Um, it does really hit too terribly hard, but it is helpful for gap closing and pulling people out stealth. Let's say if you leave them, then they stealth immediately pulls them out. Um, it's really helpful for when you're running wings, and I'll show you wings here in just a moment. I actually have a few clips in open world of people just killing themselves with wings, but uh, that's not using this build, it's just using wings in general since Cyrodiil, but uh, we'll get to that build another time. So, running Cauterize. Gives us crit on the back bar and a nice little hot over time. Coagulating blood, not even buffed up. It does 9.6k healing on the back bar. Um, if you want to buff it up um, on the back bar, it's 11k. That's drastically better than what it was last patch. Using Dragonfire Skill. If you don't want to run Dragonfire Skill, I suggest running the other wing. Sorks pretty much run rampant this patch. And I feel like you just have to have wings to kind of deal with the overload spam. Um, the damage that Dragonfire Scale does is equivalent to approximately a Flames of Oblivion proc, and this procs every half second. This does a lot of damage when people trying to pressure you. Volatile Armor uh, gives us our resistances, it helps do more damage against melee targets. 
and it's just great in general. It helps pull people out of stealth as well, and it's a really easy way to proc overwhelming on your back bar. See, pretty much every time I've used this, it's proc'd. So, uh, using degeneration on our back bar, this is a pretty heavy hitting dot as well, and it also gives us our major sorcery because tripods are super good this patch. I suggest running tripods on any DK build and temporal guard for the uh, minor protection on my back bar. So, that does it for that. Now, uh, let me explain uh, how Grothgar works, right? So, the reason I only run Grothgar or run Elfbane on one bar is because if you proc Grothgar on your front bar and swap, it doesn't matter. You still get the 10 seconds, you know, for example. Let me go ahead and proc it right here. Now, I swap my back bar. You can see my timer right here. This is my Grothgar timer. And it's still going the full 10 seconds. Just when the timer ends, just be sure you're on your front bar, just so in case Grothgar does proc again, you're going to get the full 10 second duration, right? So uh, you can download add-ons, uh, I'm just using a simple add-on uh, called Buff Timers, and you can download this and customize it however you want. So this is an easy way for me to keep track of when Grothgar is about to go off cooldown, just I can make sure I'm on my front bar. When Grothgar procs, get the 10 second duration. Um, if if you're not on your front bar, you're getting pressured. Yeah, you're only going to get the five second duration, but it's really not that big a deal. Um, but this does help min max your gear slots because in so doing, running this build this way, you get overwhelming. You get Grothgar. You can slot a piece of trainee and a Malakanth man. This is the most efficient way to run these two sets together in my opinion. But if you want to be lazy and not really worry about uh, what bar you're on, you could run 5 Grothgar, but you have to change the build around. I don't think you can run another 5 set and Malakanth band and a monster set, so trust me, this is the best way to run at least an Horcrux on this one. So that does it for the skills, does it for potions, pretty much everything besides the CP. Now, I am very low CP, pardon my dog in the background, she she barks at everything. So the best way to do this, uh, in my opinion, is just by going over the passives, and then whatever you guys have left over, just dump in health or more spell damage or whatever, you, you guys get the point in the champion system. So in the blue tree, I'm running Deadly Aim, Thaumaturge, Enduring Resolve, and Duelist re Rebuff, I thought it was Rebute, whatever. So in the red tree, running Survival Instincts, Juggernaut, Peace of mind and hardened. Um, I will take a moment to kind of explain why I like to run it this way. So there's a lot of synergy between these three passives right here. So um, peace of mind helps give you more recovery when you're CC immune. Um, hardened actually increases the duration of your CC immunity, and then juggernaut um, you take less damage while you're CC immune. So that's a lot why I like to run these three together because there's really good synergy between the three. And then in the green tree, nothing really matters, just as long as you have the war mount passive. <laughs> so you don't have to worry about stamina, and then of course, uh, if you really have a lot of points, you can come over to uh, Rationer. If you use the really expensive potions, which I try not to, but there are some major heroism potions for the DK that's, that you could build. And this gives you a 10% chance to get those potions back, which is pretty cool, but I just don't have the points for it right now. So, I feel that I accurately kind of explained everything. If you guys have any questions about the, the way I kind of run the setup, please let me know down in the comments. I'll read them as soon as I can get back to you guys. I know it's a little confusing doing the whole Rothgar front bar, overwhelming surge back bar. If I left out anything, please let me know. I also do have one more DK build. It's more or less a dueling build, but you can also transition it into a Proctard open world build as well. So, thanks guys for coming into the channel, sitting through this 15 to 20 minute video. Um, thanks for the support on the streams, the donations, especially Andrew. He bought me, or well, he gave me enough to buy me a, a USB adapter so I can use a new mic and stuff for my uh, laptop. So, thank you for that. The best way to support the channel, guys, just simply like and sub. You can always uns unsub at any time. If you really want to go a step further, I do have a Patreon with pretty cheap tiers. If you want to help support the channel that way, any revenue that I ever get from any donations goes right back into the channel for you guys. Um, if Even if I make enough during a month, like $20, $30, I actually drop giveaways at the end of the month, like one mil giveaways. So if you want to contribute to that, um, 
I'll let everyone know where this money came from from the uh, the billion dollar kind of giveaways at the end of the month so just a little something to think about so I'm not pocketing anything it, it goes right back into the channel back into you guys really so any donations you're just supporting people on the channel and uh, we really appreciate that so enough rambling this has been Horcrux like sub peace